It is 7 p.m. September 13th, 2022, and I'd like to call the Town of Lake Mills Town Board to order. Notice is posted at the Town Hall and on the Town's website. Can we make a motion to adopt September's agenda? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries to approve the agenda. Can we get a motion to approve the minutes from public hearing on August 16th, 2022? I'll make that motion with the public hearing on August Public hearing on August 16th. Second the motion. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries to approve the public hearing minutes. Can we get a motion to approve the August 16th, 2022 Town Hall Board meeting minutes? Make a motion to approve. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries to approve the minutes. Approval of the Treasury report. Make a motion to approve the uh, Treasury report. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries to approve the Treasury report. We have a motion to approve the town expansions. None. None? No. Okay, we're good. We get a motion to approve the general fund voucher. Make a motion to approve September's disbursements of $121,288.20. Second that motion. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed to any motion carries. Reports, police report. All right. <clears throat> um, August, we have 38 hours of patrol, two complaints. Um, there were 15 traffic stops, nine warnings and 10 citations, and three park checks, and six, I'm sorry, six park checks and three residence checks. Uh, boat uh, had 26 patrol hours with one citation and three written warnings issued. And that's all I got for those. Y'all good? Yeah, for that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, did you want to talk about the boat right away too or not? Yeah, if you want, I can do that. Yeah, I want to yeah. do it right away. Okay. Um, so I've been in contact with uh, late assault boats out uh, of Superior, Wisconsin. They gave us an estimate earlier this year for a replacement of a boat. Um, it would come with a boat, a trailer, and fully decked out um, at the cost of $120,760. That was the estimate back in May when I got that. Um, and again, there, there's some adjustment with their uh, that comes with pretty much everything. So we could amend that estimate to make it a little bit more useful for our department, not have as much stuff on there. Um, that also comes with the motor and everything. Uh, I've been in contact with the DNR, trying to get approval um, for the purchase of a new boat because we have to go through our recreational safety warden to get approval if we want to get reimbursed. Um, at that cost, the DNR will reimburse up to 75% over the course of five years. So approximately 90,000 would be absorbed by the DNR over that five years, leaving our total of about $30,000 for a new boat and um, trailer. Um, I did send our current boat and trailer to the DNR, pictures of that, so they can review that. I have not heard back from them yet. Um, the only thing I don't know is if the new boat, uh, which would be a 22-foot uh, rigid hull inflatable boat, um, would fit on our lift station or not. So we might have to look at that. Um, and um, our current boat we purchased back in 2013. So it's been a good boat, but it's got some wear and tear um, for it being 10 years old or 9 years old. So is that lift station that's owned by the city? Isn't it? That's not right. Ours, is it? That I'm not sure. Right. I know the yeah, city I think I think they it. just kind of lend it to us, right? Is that the deal? Okay, because we don't own the lift part of it. No. no. They just give us a space. So when I started here, that was 
those are the two things that were provided. the canopy i think we own but not the okay. lift itself because it you guys put the canopy on yeah there. we put the canopy yeah, on so it makes sense because the city does appear in the uh, lift station yeah. itself so that would be a city discussion if it didn't okay. fit or whatever we needed a bigger one if they want to if they desire to keep you guys down by Silver Beach, if they don't, well, find another home, I guess. Yeah. So, would it still have to be outfitted with lights and so radio? That estimate came with lights. Our radio that we have is current spec, so it would be able to be swapped out the same with our um, MVC. Um, and I did get an estimate for all new lights and everything from 1033 who put our uh, lights and NBC in the boat now. Um, that would obviously be adjusted if this boat comes with mm -hmm. appropriate lighting, so then we just have to have the NBC looked in. What do you think we'll get for the old one? Five bucks? Do we have to pay somebody <laughs> to take it off our hands? Or <laughs> it still runs. The boat is in good shape. Um, okay. it, it's every year, I and mean, we winterize it every. September it gets and it comes out and I mean it runs really well. Um, and I don't know how that would work if that's something that we would have to do or if that's go to the DNR and I have no idea. Go to that. auction or something. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Planning Commission report. Um the one petition from Dan Higgs, right? Yeah, it's also Ken Wilds as a property approved. owner. Was approved. That's all we had. <clears throat> Cambridge Fire and EMS report. Nothing to report. Joint Rock Lake Committee report. Since our last meeting, um, I've turned in our recommended budget. I think you have that and it's on the agenda for later. Um, and I will send a copy of that budget to the city council. Um, as stated in our uh, ordinance, they should also see it. I'm not sure if they need to approve it, but we're gonna talk to them about that. We decided to not make changes in the recreational and welcome brochure until the uh, supply we have is depleted because there's really no major changes to make to it other than one of our members said the pictures on it are not Rock Lake. <laughs> so that, you know, that'll be something we'll think about. Um, I've submitted the ordinance to you for our next steps and I see that's on the agenda later. Um, and again, I will send a copy of the ordinance to the city council for their review, as stated in our ordinance, we're supposed to do that. We're going to move forward with creating and making available um, to the public AIS and other educational lake information. We had previously talked about doing webinars and asking to do that, and we decided that that is not what we would recommend at this time. So I think there's some amount of money in the budget for some of that and it's going to probably take the form of a PSA or maybe some notes in the uh, paper about did you know this about the lake, did you know we found this, uh, a different information that people would like to know. I have a question or we've had a question about the fundraising recommendation, recommendation we approved at the last meeting. The request, it didn't get acted on, and there were questions um, in regard to the, whether it's within the scope of the ordinance or not. And um, as far as solicitation and earmarking it for specific projects, and I don't know what you would like us to do about that. The, the committee is a little conflicted about it. Um, are, you, are you going to vote on the recommendation, or should we rework the wording to incorporate the need for legal review? prior to setting up fundraising committees. This fundraising, fundraising recommendation was not part of the Majala Channel project, though it could impact the Majala Channel project that you tabled. I got a question on it. 
Sure. And I believe I made this recommendation last, last meeting, but I'll make it again tonight. Obviously, I'm hoping to avoid taking this to legal, and it would be nice because this is a joint Rock Lake committee. The city already has certain things in place, and how does it work for the city when they're fundraising for all these parks? And, and is that through independent organizations, or how is that being achieved? And you know, what is the functionality of that? And I think that's a good starting point. We might as well. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel here. Sure. Um, so if we can find that out from the other half of your committee, that would be great. Um, and and know that first. I mean, if we have to take it to legal, we will. But or, or you know, if, if, if I, I would prefer not to if we don't have to. Okay. I will take that back to the committee, and we will um, get that information and uh, rework or reword the, the uh, recommendation. Um, we're in the process of compiling a list of projects to work on. Um, it's difficult, as you probably know, you don't meet often enough to do as much as we'd like to. Some of the projects are compiled from our members. These are in process and uh, we're compiling them and prioritizing them. Some projects will be worked on um, based on the vision, goal, and recommendations listed in the 2018 to 2028 Rock Lake Management Plan. We are planning a session with the RLIA and Jefferson County, who, as well as us and the board, partook in um, um, setting up the, the management plan. So um, we're meeting with them so we can reconcile the recommendations because if you read through them, we're not sure what has been accomplished, what hasn't been accomplished, what do we need to do next to make them be accomplished. So that meeting is going to be set up for in October. Um, and if there's any projects or priorities you see that we should be uh, aware of to work on, please forward those to us so we can add them to this meeting. Um, I know that it wasn't part of our job, <laughs> but I already had in the works uh, uh, to get an estimate on the turbidity curtain from um, the only person I could find that did it was land and water supply and this Tim uh, Grosh. Grosh. Um, and his phone number, and there's some figures there. Remove and replace the curtain was $20,000. He said that's a budget figure. Um, to remo remove what other, other uh, companies have bid to us, uh, 3,666 3, cubic yards of sediment would be about 22,000. I can't say this, 220,000 uh, as a budget figure. Um, and if you think about just the part between Cedar Lane and the turbidity curtain, that's about 300 cubic yards. So if you kind of extrapolate that out, it's about um, 18,000 of that 220,000. So to do that whole project, which I know you're getting bids for from this particular company, it would be about $240,000. And it explains what's included in that 220. This is a hydraulically dredged process. Is this a different? This is a different company. This is a different company. I had we had requested information from them before my last meeting that we reported on. So since I got the information, I thought I'd include it and give you the information since you said you were going to be looking into that. And we will do whatever else you would like us to do with that. But that's information I thought you might want. Thanks. And I sent you previously through um, Robin the other information on dredging that we'd had so that you had that in your records. Is there going to be anybody else in that Rock Lake or in the, at that meeting in 6B there? I'm sorry, say that I, I know you have, you're going to be meeting with the RLA in Jefferson County. And the Rock Lake Improvement Plan, and I don't remember the full scope of it, I know there was a, there was a company that kind of put it all together, but I think Jefferson County and RLIA were, had big involvement in that when that was put together and whatever, and then there was a survey involved as well in the, in the JRLC at the time, but is there any other groups that are gonna be invited to that meeting? Well, this was just our initial invite to, to start the game, to kind of, we wanna do a reconciliation, reconcil because those are the people whose names are after each of the recommendations. It's either RLIA, us, or the county, or 
uh, and the town is part of RLIA, or is part of the Joint Rock Lake, so no, nobody else has been invited at this point. That doesn't mean we're not gonna go further, but this was our first step. We thought too many people at one time might not accomplish what we needed, which was simple right. reconciliation and what we do next. Because have they already met the 20% reduction in phosphorus? I don't know, probably not. That's something that the county will tell us. There's other projects like that. Yeah, I just, I just want to caution that anytime something is published, you know, it's, that doesn't mean, I mean, it's a tool, right? Right. The management plan is, it's, it's one tool in the toolbox, um, but it doesn't mean whatever's in there, that's what has to be done. Right. Um, you know, so there, there's got to be a very comprehensive look at that because there is a lot of great things out there on the outside and um, just so that, you know, there isn't uh, tunnel vision just in the one one area in that this is this is the way it has to be because I, I know that's where it's run into problems with the city in the past as well. Um, well uh, we've also got some recommendations that I didn't want to list yet because they haven't been voted on that the members of the uh, Joint Rock Lake Committee have recommended so the, and we're looking at this as our recommendations based on that plan and on other information but we also want to make sure that um, we, as a town committee, have a handle on what other people are doing with the lake so that we can partake in that, participate okay. in those, and have some say in some of those projects also. Okay. Excellent. Do you know, is it going to be just a certain number of people that are meeting as this larger group? Because if there's a quorum, you need to know and you need to post it. Um, so I was, more than three, more than two of you. There probably will be a quorum of our group, and so I will have okay. to let you know that yes. once we select a date. Thank you okay. for reminding me. The other question I had that I don't know if you guys remember is, did we ever figure out um, that current permit that's out there that West Dawson had applied for, if that's transferable to, for the dredging part of it? Is I that? Okay. I, don't, I don't know if it is or isn't. That's probably something else we need some answers to. We probably need answers to that, but the two companies that we talked to um, said they've done this before, and even though it says they're not transferable. But we go by what the DNR says. Right, so we'll find out. Well, the, D the DNR may allow, but what I'm, I'm totally confused on the whole thing because the town didn't take the permits out, the group took right. them out, and that, so we got to get all that stuff straightened out before Is we there can do anything. Something right. you would like our group to do? Should we investigate that with the DNR? Well, we're try it would be helpful. I mean, okay. it, it, you know, it's less time, you know, on our plate to do that. I, I did send an email to uh, the, the person that does the permitting, so to speak, to see if they could dig up the history on this thing because there doesn't seem to be a lot of documents, I don't think, Robin, that we found on this. Well, there used to be files of them. Of the, the like we're license. Yeah. Of the permit, I did Right. We that. used to have several files of the whole channel discussion over the decades, <laughs> and it's, I'm not finding everything that I felt like we used to have. And I don't so think we have looking. any engineering in the channel. I mean, there's got to be something that physically resides with somebody at the state level because I don't know how you issue a permit for something that was built that's man-made right. without having some kind of scope of what was actually right. done. The permit um, for the original dredging. Correct, and I mean, back, way back then, it was, was it a developer or was it the time? You know, I have yeah. no idea. Well, we, can, we can do some That's history on that from our side and bring well, it back to the next channel. Yeah. <laughs> from oh. the start of it, yeah. when they actually created the channel. Yeah. Correct, what you're asking. correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's some interesting information also in some of our abstracts for our property too, so. Well, I mean, the more information, the better, because I think there's a lot of confusion here. And I, I you know, from a legality standpoint, when you start pulling permits for this stuff on the water, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately it's, you know, considered state public waters, you know, so state has control over that, but you know, it, it's, Kind of weird that just anybody can pull permits to be, you know. I know you can do it individually as a homeowner Correct. if you have to remove aquatics and bases or whatever to do things like that. But um, but the scope of something like this is completely different. So well, I thought it's the, complicated. <laughs> I thought this last permit that was with West Dawson. Right, it's with Dawson and, and the and the residents. 
uh, he did that as a representative of all the okay. channel residents. So that's the permit that expires in 2025. Five, I think. Right. Correct. And just to, if you do the hydraulic process, um, then when they dredge, it would have to really be even earlier because they have to let those tubes dry for two months before then they dispose of them. Right. So we wouldn't have to necessarily talk to the farmer that we've used before. They, they take responsibility for, for taking, getting rid of it, which is a good thing. Right, I mean, anytime something's, anytime something's going on with the water, whether, you know, this stuff continues to fill it in, I mean, there's, there are laws. So, I mean, we have to, we just have to be very conscientious that we take a yeah. look at and it. Yeah, these, and these are all companies that have done this all over the state and actually out of state also, the yeah. three companies I think I gave you information on. All right. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And thank you for the written copy. That's very yes. helpful. Yes, you're welcome. All right, my report, uh, city, county, state. County, well, uh, I know Shore Acres Road, that's gonna be October, because I talked to Brian, and I've been in conversation with Brian, uh, and along those county conversations with the county highway um, department, uh, the shouldering is, they're, they're doing some, we have more washouts too, so I informed him of that as well, and that's not, they're still working on highway projects and stuff, so it's not like, you know, that's stuff they push off to later in the year typically. Right. So um, I know they've got some of it done, but they don't definitely don't have all of it done. Uh, city, there's really not much to report. I haven't heard really anything on EMS. The only thing I heard there was um, from uh, the city council president was that they put the fire ambulance into service, I think, to help out as a basic service. Uh, to Lake Mills EMS is the way I interpreted that. Um, you know, in the event there's staff that flies the coop or whatever that they want to make sure that they had some kind of coverage, so to speak. And that was going to be for our first responder only and no transport? Mm -hmm. they yeah, I don't know if it was transport or anything. Yeah. No, I, that, that part I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know that level of detail, I guess. Um, so I can't answer that. At the state level, I haven't heard anything on the grants. Uh, first it was late August, now it's mid to late September. <laughs> so I don't know. talking about the grants for the road? That would be for Mud Lake Road, yeah. If, if, yeah there, was, there was a lot of grants written, so they're still okay. sifting through all that. So that's what all I have there. I've not uh, done anything at the county level as far as EMS, but I haven't heard anything being really pushed there as well. However, I did read today that it uh, looked like uh, the taxes were going on Jefferson County tax levy. So, <laughs> so, I don't know. Everything else keeps going up. The tax levy goes down. So I don't know how it all works out. But that's it for me. ETZ. Nothing. Parks Committee. Uh, they're working on two quotes, it sounds like, for a kayak launch uh, at Mahala Shores and uh, a quote to replace Ferry Pier. Um, so we'll be looking at, you know, potential, it sounds like grants, 50-50 matches and stuff like that. So that was kind of the base of the Parks Committee report. Town Hall Facilities Committee. Okay, um, so the group, we took a few um, our field trip to a couple different town halls in the area, including the city um, police department area of Allen took us through um, just to kind of get a sense of spaces and uses of the spaces and what's effective, what's not. Um, we started a discussion with the rep from the Ellers um, about financing um, the project like uh, for the town hall and how the process looks and how we get approval from the electors. Um, continuing to bring um, our ideas for what our needs are and, and such to get a conceptual plan drawn up with the architect and kind of get that finalized drawing in a more presentable manner before we present it to the public. So. 
And we're shooting for January. Oh yeah, sorry. January for the first public presentation. Right. No, okay. sometime good. Excellent. Great work. All right. That was the time period for public comment. Uh, if you have something publicly to say, this is your time to speak, unless the board calls upon you. And hopefully we are gonna hold everybody to that tonight. Um, please keep your comments to three minutes. Come to the podium, announce your name, and announce your address. Unfortunately, that didn't happen last week. Uh, so I will say that that person, because I don't know if it was on video or not, or if we ended up getting the name, I don't think we did. It was Hope Ustek in the back of the room that never approached the podium um, that was speaking at that time. Uh, just so everybody is aware of that. Is there anybody for public comment tonight? Can I say something? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to make public comment then, since nobody else wants to talk tonight. So, to be courteous to this board, uh, you know, pl please come to the podium when you are publicly speaking. Don't interrupt the board when the board's trying to uh, make decisions. You know, people on all sides of me here have been doing this for a long time, and it's uh, very discourteous to them. I think, you know, it's it's just. There's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. Uh, there's no reason not to be transparent. So please, you know, please announce yourself, be transparent. I think that's just the way things need to be. I'll say there's a lot of contentious issues at in the township all the time. Uh, the town board works very, very hard to try to get to some level of compromise uh, to, to get to a solution that doesn't always happen. Um, but everybody can remain professional and you know do it in a, a, a professional manner uh, without creating a lot of anxiety and getting mad and you know and and throwing out slang statements and everything else there's just really no reason for it um, it's also very important to be fully transparent so when the board is asking questions when we're hearing commentary that somebody's receiving emails and lots of emails and things like that that we know like approximately how many because that's really important to the township especially when it's affecting businesses and other things uh, and residents uh, so there's no reason to keep secrets uh, you know this is a public forum um, and you know we can all be adults and work through the issues and get to solutions and that's my public comment for tonight applications discussion and or decision of request made by Kent Willies for a Lot config reconfiguration. Kent Wilds. Oop, Wilds, my fault. Sorry. They get my name wrong all the time, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't try to say it three times in a row real fast. Uh, PIN 018071302310000, North 7029 North Shore Road. Open up for discussion. Do you have anything to say, Kent? Oh, I just had to move the lot line so we all in conjunction with what they wanted, so. He owns all the property around this, <clears throat> so there's no issue as far as uh, sure. that. Um, <clears throat> I believe it was 24, 20 some acres. Total. Well, well you bought 30 or ended up being 20. So, like I said, the planning commission didn't have any issues. They approved it. So, good. Make a motion to approve. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All opposed say nay. Motion carries. We need, and I'll get scanned and sent over to the county. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next one is discussion of only proposed facilities at Sandy Beach by Tory, and I don't believe he's here tonight. No, he asked if we could postpone, and he was not able yep. to make it tonight. So next month. Okay. 
Excellent. So why is that in the agenda? Is that just so that the, the people, the, our electors, kind of understand what's going on? Because yeah. we right. really do not have anything to say about this. Right, Correct. and he wanted to make sure Correct. that we got an opportunity to hear what the proposal is as well, since we have jurisdiction right. over the lake and whatever right. happens as Sandy kind of interacts yep. with the lake and such. Okay. So. Right. Kind of as a courtesy. Yep. Correct. Gotcha. Old business, discussion or decision of status of Lake Mills EMS services table. If you discuss anything, you have to take it off table. So. I did not see anything come in. Yeah, you asking for, well, you guys got the right, it just came in, right? It yeah, came just, in like an hour before the yeah, meeting, so you guys have not had ample yeah. time to Yeah, to look okay, at it. all right, then let's move on then. Unless somebody wants to take it off the table. No, I just have one question. We, we we had an ordinance or not an ordinance, a contract at the last meeting that you were going to rewrite. And, uh, yep, and we got I brought it to Tom, and we waited until Tom Murphy got back from vacation because oh, he was he gone for a, a long time on vacation. Now. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So he's got it in his hands now. Yep. So that'll be next month. Yep. Okay. Okay. Moving on, discussion or decision of the proposed guardrail at the south end of Crossman Road. I talked to Corey today, and he's putting this, the documentation together. I mean, everything is done, and, and we're going to get that off to our attorney for next steps. We're probably going to have to make a board decision at, at, with that guidance um, at next meeting. Um, but it sounds like everything is in, in order. Um, in, in as far as the way we need, you know, essentially need to go stuff on their end, uh, you know, to get jurisdiction to get to acquire the land and everything, um, and the reasoning and all that, and uh, it's looking pretty good. So uh, it's taken a long time, but uh, essentially, I think we agreed on the four to one slope anyway. And, uh, so when yeah, that's what I was wondering. Is the guardrails? Kind of going off the table, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more should be, yeah. Land, well, land acquisition. Yeah. Land acquisition, okay. yeah. So we need to probably reword the agenda item for the future. Yeah, we can just end. drop this one going forward, I guess. Yeah, proposed land acquisition. Yeah. Okay. Now, when we do get the paperwork from Corey, do we want to wait till the next meeting to make the decision that it should go on to the, the attorney, or should that automatically happen before? The next meeting if well, I would suggest it. that we make a decision here I guess tonight so we just decide and get it off so we can be in a position to do what we need to do for October That's what, yeah I was wondering correct what, what steps we need yep. to take yep okay so I'll make a motion that we uh, get the inform Tom works with Corey gets the information required and sends it on to the uh, next well proceeds with the next steps whether that's the attorney or whatever. yep okay Second. <coughs> discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say aye. Motion carries. Discussion or decision of proposed text amendments for a bundle of ordinances being con considered include 1-2, 1-4, 1-5, 1-7, 1-8, 1-14, 1-16, 1-19, 1-20, 1-21, 1-22, 1-23, 1-24, 1-25, 1-26, 1-27, 1-28, 1-29, 1-30, 1-31, 
I got an opportunity to shake each each of your hands at the beginning of the meeting. Nice to meet you. I'm Chief Paul Blount of, with Cambridge Area EMS. Just to give you a really brief background of why I'm here and what led us to today, um, I understand that Lake Mills EMS is having some difficulty. Um, it was well publicized in the paper and also amongst the fire and EMS community. And we had heard discussions of that and then obviously being already a provider for fire and EMS services for approximately five to 7% of your, of your township um, and you having a vote uh, on our fire and EMS district, um, I thought it would be uh, the right thing to do to just offer assistance and help. Certainly not looking to step on uh, Lake Mills EMS's toes if they're able to stay in service and stay sustainable and provide services to your community, um, but also to offer assistance and help and maybe a possible solution if they weren't able to continue. I also know that there's been discussion with the city of Lake Mills about them potentially um, being interested in providing services not only to their city but possibly to your community i obviously am not here to speak to that i'm just here to speak to cambridge area ems and then what we have available to offer you for help and assistance whatever decision that you make so after a, a meeting that was held that we had we had some discussions at the commission level i just wanted to make sure that the board was clear tonight that these are initial planning uh, discussions and planning numbers. There has not been a vote by the commission, by the Fire and EMS Commission on these numbers or on this discussion. This was just a general discussion with the president of the commission and with the knowledge of the rest of the commission that we were providing some initial numbers and some initial discussion. A brief background about Cambridge Area EMS. You already know we cover fire and EMS services for about five to seven percent of your township. Um, we have approximately 20 staff members. We provide paramedic level service. So paramedic level service 24 seven, 365. And we're required to do that. Once you provide a service, you have to provide it all the time, 24 seven. Um, your current provider, Lake Mills EMS, is an AEMT provider. Um, how to break that down for you as, as basic as possible is that AEMTs can administer approximately 16 medications. Uh, EMT basics, basic life support, can administer approximately nine, while a paramedic at Cambridge Area EMS can administer approximately 47 medications. So 16, your current provider, 47 for us. Many of these medications are life-saving advanced procedures and life-saving medications. We can do synchronized cardioversion, which is an electrical shock of your heart, uh, cardiac pacing, which is when your heart is too slow, we can pace. I'm just gonna give you a brief just introduction there's so many other things we can do we can do advanced airway procedures we can do surgical advanced airway procedures um, as a comparison an AEMT from Lake Mills receives approximately 320 hours of training to get that certification a paramedic in the state of Wisconsin has to get 1200 hours of education and training so just to try to give you a basic idea of what the differences are Again, right now in your community, in the 5 to 7% we cover, you get paramedic level service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I heard there was some discussion at your last meeting about um, different areas that we may or may not be able to cover, certain amounts of population, certain, certain amounts of area. Um, that would be something that we would want to continue to discuss with the board and continue to discuss with the commission. Uh, the 1600 number, is that a correct number of population was discussed? Not saying that that's permanent, but I just want to make sure I'm in the rough area of approximately 1,600 residents. And, and so based on that 1,600, um, we came up with a proposed per capita rate. We do not do proposed per capita rates at Cambridge Area Fire and EMS. We do equalized values. However, you're unique. We do equalized values because we provide fire and EMS services, and that's how we arrive at equalized values, and that's how we get your current number we're willing to work with you and work with the community to have some type of a different rate calculated and figured out different than equalized value because you're only asking us to provide ems services so yeah. i'm going to throw some numbers at you might be a little complicated but i'm going to do my best to explain yeah it. the 1600 we gave you was we had that section of town that was yep. like yeah, two two back, yep. 250 yeah. or 300 yeah. that, or just too far yeah. Yep. That, yep. yeah i mean but we you know obviously want to take a look at the big picture absolutely <laughs> so based on that 1600 we came up with a 60 per capita rate so 60 per 
you know, per capita versus what you were paying previously versus some numbers that have been thrown around about 40, 30, 15, and how we arrived at 60 per capita. So I just want to give you a comparison. The village of Cambridge in our current budget, they get fire and EMS services for $200,000 annually is what they contribute. Their population is less than the 1600 that you're talking about. So in equalized value, they're paying approximately $200,000 into the district for several hundred less population than you're asking us to cover. At a 60 proposed per capita, that's $96,000 cost to the town. So Cambridge, 200,000 for about 1,300 population. You, at 1,600 population, 96,000. However, you already pay 29,011 for the five to seven percent that you get fire and EMS. So you would obviously have to add $96,000, if that's what we ended up agreeing upon, plus the 29,000 to arrive at your full number for the full 1,600. Now, I'm not gonna be able to give you a, a number for your full township. Why? Because you guys brought up a very, very valid point. Covering to the interstate north with a station in Cambridge and a paramedic in Cambridge and two ambulances in Cambridge is not feasible. It would require 20 minute plus response times. So we would have to allocate resources somewhere in your town, build it into your new village hall plan so we can have an EMS station adjoined to it. Uh, I'm just throwing stuff out there. Um, you know, we have a truck. We have a truck to put in your district. We have a truck now. We have an ambulance that could be allocated to your district. Um, Dave can speak to this. We have an additional ambulance that's about to get ordered and we can have a truck allocated to your community, but we would only want to look at doing that. It would be very expensive to do that. Only if we were talking about the interstate and areas north that would need coverage. Everything that we're discussing now is with the same footprint, footprint Cambridge area EMS currently has. Our headquarters in the Cambridge, village of Cambridge, and having two ambulances, a paramedic always on duty. Usually it's two paramedics always on duty, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If your township said we have other needs, we want you to cover the interstate north, we want you to cover all of our township, we'd have to discuss that more in depth, come up with what you wanted for coverage and how you wanted that to look like, and then I could provide you that number. The only number I'm giving you for tonight for discussion is the 1600 population, that's the area that you already discussed. Uh, to talk about uh, money and numbers a little bit more, 80% of the call volume of our district is EMS. So yes, we're talking about 100% EMS coverage for your district, but I wanted you to know that when you're looking at Village of Cambridge numbers, $200,000, what you currently pay $29,000 for 5 to 7% of your population. Imagine if your equalized value was the same and we multiplied that by whatever number to cover 90% at 29,000 at 5%, imagine what that number would be at 90%. That would be a much, much bigger number than 96,000. So we have reduced it because we're only providing EMS services. Nevertheless, that in a fire and EMS district, Lake Mills would have to say that this is the trend because it is the trend. 80% of your call volume is EMS. It's not fires, it's not it's not um, motor vehicle accidents, it's EMS calls, it's medical calls. A one-time capital expenditure um, or capital investment is also being proposed for approximately 85,000. Realizing that all of these numbers are negotiable. The reason for the $85,000 capital purchase investment, it's simple. We're already buying the equipment. We already have purchased the ambulances. We already have the expensive $35,000, two cardiac monitors buying a third. We've already made these investments in the district. So if we're gonna to start to cover your area, we would want some type of capital investment purchase that you would buy in. Could, does that have to be a one-time payment? No. Could it be spread out over a year? Yes. Could it be spread out over two years? Yes. If the town said, we need it spread out over three years, would our commission, and would I worry about that? No. We just want you to have buy-in to all the equipment that we've already bought and the equipment that we might have to buy to adequately cover your area. Um, if your township is interested, as we discussed in additional area, I'm just not gonna be able to talk about that tonight and give you specifics, but I will tell you this, we'll put an ambulance in your township, we'll put people on that ambulance, it's just gonna cost you more. What are the, what's gonna happen to the volunteers at Lake Mills EMS if it, if it closes its doors? I'm not saying it is, 
but where are they going to go? Well, they're welcome at Cambridge Area EMS. We're a combination department. Uh, almost half of our department is part-time and volunteer members. If there's volunteer members in Lake Mills Township or volunteer members in the community of City of Lake Mills and they want to join Cambridge Area EMS, we'll welcome them. And if they go to join you know, the city department or another department, understandable as well. But we just want you to know that we'll work with your residents and your community if they want to be on a volunteer department, volunteer their time, paid on call department or part time, we would welcome them. And obviously that can be a consideration going forward for staffing as well. Right now, we staff with volunteers and we also staff with full time. We have seven full time staff members. We have a lot more volunteers as well. So do you have any questions of all that fast stuff I threw at you? Um, I do, on the $85,000, the, the capital improvements, would that money go back into the budget to offset everybody else's? Because you know, right now everything is all—all um, all the payments, all the leases, and all the purchases are all done by the equalized value of you know the um, just spending members. So, does that eighty-five thousand dollars get banked someplace, or is that going back into the budget to offset everybody? I believe it would. There would be some offsetting, but we're also going to have some expenses to be able to cover your area and cover more of your township. So you're going to have some of it's going to go into those expenses, but then you will have some offsetting that occurs. One of the things that was discussed at the commission level, and again, not voted on and not an official vote, is just if we don't charge a per capita of rate of approximately sixty thousand, and we have other people that are less population paying two hundred thousand. If we don't have a number that's reasonable from the town of Lake Mills, we're going to be, the other districts are going to be offsetting your costs. So how we arrived at this number is to make sure that we could adequately cover. Now, I will say this, please consider that one of the advantages of being in our district, as you already are, that would not change, is we share and pool these resources. If you were to go this alone and start your own EMS service, you'd be looking at a million dollar expense. So you're sharing expenses with Cambridge, Oakland, Christiana, Rockdale, and they're ecstatic about it. They're ecstatic about being able to provide you guys a higher level of service to more of your community if you're interested. But we certainly aren't interested in being pushy. We're certainly not interested in saying we should be the only thing that you consider. We just want you to know we're here offering to help and we already have the relationship established. We don't have to change our inter intergovernmental agreement. You're already a vote. You get input and buy-in, you already do today with only 5% of, of your population. And if we did more of it, you get that same buy-in and you get that same vote. Right. Which we are owners in the building and fire trucks mm -hmm. and ambulances. Yes, you do. Right now. And you have the value in them and you're already, you're already helping us purchase a new ambulance. I mean, you're right. already doing that. Yep. So. I just have one clarification, which I think you kind of answered later on, but the 96000 that you calculated for the 1600 per capita at $60, that's just EMS, just, just to EMS. clarify that. Okay. If we were trying to arrive at a number for fire and EMS, we would be looking towards equalized value because that's the standard we use now. Just to give you some comparison of areas so you guys can process this, I just talked to the Jefferson EMS area and they just negotiated some new agreements with townships and their contracts, not districts like we have. And they're, we're in the ballpark for per capita of their new negotiations. And you're welcome to fact check me because I wanna make sure I provide you all the information. Um, when you talk to other EMS services, they're using per capita, equalized value, and call volume to arrive at their numbers. Some are using just per capita, some are using just equalized value. So there's a different, different ways to arrive at this. We're, this is just what we thought would be the most reasonable way to present to you. All the numbers are negotiable. All the numbers can be discussed additionally and further. You guys are more than welcome to ask us any questions and more than welcome to talk about this additionally. And we have to have official commission meetings that you, know, you will be a part of to make any final decisions, but we just wanted to throw the initial data and information out there. So. Paul, if, if, if uh, EMS and fire were combined, like say for, for Cambridge, if value what is that I mean what, what would I mean what would that per capita I, I'm just trying to make sense of all this yes I was, I was taking per capita what we got charged for fire at the, at the city to our number of residents 
mm-hmm. and it comes out to like $162 per person or something, yeah. just, just for fire alone. And I'm yep. just curious is if you combine both with Cambridge Fire and EMS, what is that? What we is do, that we, we only do it on equalized value. So we would look at, we would have to get those numbers from you guys and the equalized value of your township of 1600 or if you had us do the whole 2000. So, and, and that would be a big number and there'd probably have to be some breaks given because um, just doing your numbers versus all the others, you would be pretty high. So I, I did not figure out an equalized value, but I could get that number for you. I'm just curious. It, yeah, and there has been discussions about, and just to be transparent with you, there has been discussions about combinations of services, meaning we do more with fire in the future. Um, you know, those discussions are taking place, but you know, I'm here tonight just to speak on what we can offer you on the EMS side and knowing that you know there's some uncertainty for your for your future for EMS providers so not not wanting to talk over the top of anyone or offer anything that I can't currently offer also know that the commission uh, president when he uh, said go speak on this and reviewed all of my material that I was speaking on he also wanted me to make sure he knew that we're not we would never say no to the 2000 we're just saying then the whole township, we're just saying that we would have to find a way mm-hmm. to work with you on to strategize how to, the response times. That would have to mean an ambulance somewhere in your township, somewhere, in, to be able to adequately protect those residents. We want to provide them paramedic level services, and we're willing to. We'd have to just strategize with you guys how, how we can do that. So. And that wouldn't be an ambulance just parked here, that would be a staff. It would be an ambulance parked here if we thought we had volunteers to staff that ambulance. It could be an ambulance parked here with a very similar model that you currently have or have had in the past where volunteers respond to this ambulance within just a few minutes and live in your township and city and they go to your township to respond to the call. But I can't promise you that right now because I don't know what's going to happen related to the volunteers from Lake Mills EMS and where they're going to go or if they go anywhere. Um, I do know that we have one member on our department currently who is a Lake Mills resident, and they do volunteer for both. They work and volunteer part-time for us, and they work and volunteer part-time for Lake Mills. So maybe there would be quite a bit more of that in the future, especially if you lose, you know, if, if Lake Mills EMS doesn't have that opportunity anymore. But if they, if they do, then that would be tough to predict. But that is definitely a potential, and that did get, get discussed. Where do we park an ambulance in the township that the volunteer pay down call numbers can respond while the paramedic is coming from the village of Cambridge with all those 46 drugs and all the high tech equipment and meet that ambulance <coughs> at the scene to be able to provide paramedic service. So, Which that would be an emergency response vehicle. Yes, sir. A pickup truck or an SUV. And we, we already believe that we're um, planning to purchase that through grant money. We, as you know from being at the commission, we actually wrote a grant requesting that, and we know we're in line to get a substantial amount of grant money. We already did get almost $30,000 worth of grant money this year related to other state and federal grants we've wrote. So we'll continue to look for creative ways, whether we continue the relationship of 5 to 7%, or we increase our footprint with you guys, we'll continue to look, look for creative ways to staff and service your area. If that QRV happens um, by the end of this year, it's gonna provide, that QRV is gonna come up to your five to 7% no matter what. Or if you're, you're needing a paramedic level intercept and the city of Lake Mills calls us, guess what? We'll bring it. If Lake Mills EMS called us tomorrow, as they have sometimes, we'll bring it to that. You know, we're, we're gonna make services available whenever we can, so. And just to make it easy on it a little bit, uh, Lake Mills is 7% by area, mm-hmm. but because so much of it is, you know, rural farmland and Audubon and all that stuff, then we are 3.44% of the budget, but you cover 7%. <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. So, just so, so now, so now you're, you're losing five. So now you're educating the chief because I knew there was some flexibility in there, which is good. So. I, I appreciate that. Hey, now, no problem. Now, if somebody, asked, asked, me, told. Now if somebody had asked me, I can speak to the specific There things. you go. Yep. So thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? May I be recognized? Yeah, you, yes, absolutely. Yeah, just state your name and everything. Come up to the, the, Come up to the podium so you, everyone can hear you. Uh, Wendy Catalani Davies, W8366 Cedar Lane uh, in the town. Um, as a receiver of EMS services not here in Lake Mills or Cambridge, I think you need to consider your consumer, how many times does somebody get picked up and sits and wait because they don't have the level of service they need because they can only administer 
X number of drugs versus this number of drugs. It's happened to me two or three times, not here, uh, so don't think of it here, but I was up north and it, it's kind of frustrating as a person in pain waiting for somebody else to transfer you to another bus when you're in the middle of the country. So yeah. it'd be interesting to know that statistic. Yeah. And it's very true, Wendy, because I've personally seen that myself, where if you have to wait for a paramedic, that can be 15 to 18 minutes. And boy, that's a long time when you're waiting for paint to dry. For sure. It, it is, and, and just to be clear, we are rural Wisconsin, and we are a rural EMS provider. So our response times are, even in our district today, you know, quite long. We, we can, it can take us 10, 12, 14, 15 minutes to get to a scene. And so I'm not concerned or um, intimidated by some of your longer response times for us to get there because that is very commonplace in rural EMS. If you wanted five minute response times, just like all the big cities, you have to pay for five minute response times. And unfortunately it doesn't come for free. We'll give you five minute response times in the farthest northern portion of your township just have to pay for it and we'd have to find a way to do that so we'll work with you in any way shape or form to try to make that possible but i guarantee you you get paramedic level service with us as this young lady brought up and we can control that pain we can do that right away and not have to call for additional resources uh, related to any other questions you might have we, we will have a commission meeting um, in another 30 to 45 days and can answer any questions at that time or discuss this further depending on what direction you guys decide to go. Just curious, because you guys were kind of running around checking some of the area, what what do you think this, I mean, the portion that is being considered is more west than it is, you know, yep. what kind of response time estimation do you think is sitting there? That's a, that's a great question. We did some driving and our ambulances have done some driving just to see, you know, and we've seen some 13, 14, 14 minute response times but well, remember, another thing that we offer is that our ambulance, our primary first out ambulance is always staffed in house. So you're, they're not waiting for someone to come, we're there. And our commission just made a vote uh, about a month and a half ago or so to purchase a house right next door to the fire station. So our response times are going from four minutes from running across the street just to get the ambulance out the door to two minutes or under. So that is a huge number for Township of Lake Mills residents as well. If I shave two minutes off the response time, then that shaves makes a 14 minute response time, potentially 12 minutes. So again, every little thing we can do, if our ambulances are out on the road, which they are frequently, we had a, t we had a call uh, last week or the week before in your township. Our ambulance was uh, by Deerfield and was in your township within like five or six minutes. You know five or six minutes it was fast this is right at the edge so we if we're out we can move and we can get there pretty quickly uh in addition of a quick response vehicle which is happening I mean, it's just a matter of time and what that looks like that'll make our response times even more efficient so yeah. i don't have any more questions for him but i i i kind of see you know one we're dealing with two things here we're, you know we're pretty much down to dealing with two things at least up until june or july of next year um, the city is trying to put something in place obviously um, which is not going to happen overnight no nope. it's going to take time to build that um, and then obviously you have <coughs> a very very well established service uh, right next door either one i see as an investment you're going to be investing in either one mm -hmm. um, i think the only difference is going to be is really going to be the level of service that you want do you want the advanced or do you want paramedic because i highly doubt the city is going to do paramedic grade service at least not out of the gate um, that takes a long time for the licensing and all that state exactly. approval year and a half probably Two years. You were on board with the commission, I think, around yeah. the time they were moving. It was almost a two year process yeah. for them just to go from advanced to paramedic, yeah. just to get the staffing, the yeah. money, the equipment, the training. So. so, to simplify this for town residences as, as well, is at the city, we've never had any say. And at Cambridge, we sit on the fire commission and we have a vote on the fire commission. So, there's, there's a difference there. Would we ever get a seat at the city? Probably not. 
that, that would be my guess. It hasn't happened in Dave's illustrious career at the yeah. township level, so in Jim's as well. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so you know, it's it's one of those things that we're gonna have to deeply consider. What I will say is the time is ripe. If you know, because obviously I, I firmly believe this would probably be an easy cheese resource for ARPA funds, um, but. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of where that investment gets made, um, but we have obviously have to talk about this and discuss this more. At, you know, the yeah, look at our budget too. Yeah. Budget too. Yeah. Our budget's not going to stretch. Someone's got to give someplace no, else. Yeah. Because you're looking at one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year, pretty yeah. much is what you're looking at. So. Yep. Realizing the numbers are you know able to be discussed, they're just initial numbers. So if you're right. stretching out a budget, you need to come back to us and say. What does this look like? Because this is the number we need to get to. That those are open for discussions. Who owns? Did you guys at one time or currently own the Lake Mills EMS building? I don't think we've ever owned anything. That's all a nonprofit group. So does the so city own that, or is that owned by them? Uh, it's owned by them. You're, you're curious about that for a future footprint. Yeah. You no. Know, so okay, good to know. So. Yeah. City doesn't own it. City has no interest in buying it. Okay. That's good to know. Last administration told us that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now they got new city managers. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm sure. But once again, I mean, that's going to take time. So I mean, again, I mean, that's something that's going to have to be weighed heavily as well. You know, there's, there's a lot of things to weigh, especially with the budget. But is, you know, we can't afford to have lapse in service or have inexperienced service as well. I mean, especially if we're going to pay because. If the city gets up and running, it's not going to be cheap either. I mean, I see that figure probably right now with the way things are going around in all the other municipalities, a minimum of forty-five dollars. Oh, yeah, out of the gate, and yeah. maybe even more. Yeah, and that's for advanced EMT. So, and these costs are not going to go down. No. They're going to continue to go up. They're going up everywhere because um, it's harder to find people. So, I, I mean, it's it's there's going to be a lot of things to weigh here, but you know, I think we need to be fair to everybody and you know really take a comprehensive look at it, but we need to make the best decision for our, our, our residents' uh, safety and health, so. Yeah, and you're talking big dollars. But, um, Paul did just send out an email here maybe a week, week and a half ago that um, Wanakee is looking to put on six more uh, paramedics and starting wages 62.5 plus pennies. So that, that's some pretty steep um, yeah. competition because when we just bumped everybody up to what fifty two? Yeah, fifty. Yeah. So well, that's mid to low to mid fifties, and and that they were thankful for that. But again, when you have people around you paying sixty two, you mm -hmm. know people do make decisions based on money for their families, and mm -hmm. so that's tough, tough competition. We have lost in transparency. We've lost a fair amount of people in and out, even in the short nine months I've been mm -hmm. chief, and it's just you bring them in, and then you know it's it's just like any employer in any line of work right now. It's extremely yeah. hard. So, but we have maintained service 24 hours a day, seven days a week at the paramedic level, and I see no, you know, no concern that we won't be able to maintain that. Yeah, and that's so. awesome, Paul. Yeah, and the last point I want to make is I don't want people to get totally focused on run times because there's a lot of factors and variables to run times, weather being included. Um, but you go to a lot of other counties, and especially you get north of here. I mean, there's there's counties that have run times upwards of 40 minutes. I mean, it just depends. I, I mean, we're not that rural, but I mean, it's it's not um, it's not uncommon in today's world. I mean, obviously, we want to do as good as, as as good as we can, but you know, for the city to get around the, the lake to the west side is not fast either. So it's not it's not five it's not five minutes, six minutes. I mean, that's not happening. Um, so. That's all I have to say. Thanks for your time. We're, we're definitely Thank here to work with you in any way, shape, or form we can. So. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate Thank you. you stopping. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Okay, next item, discussion or decision of uh, parking signage at Ferry Park uh, for bolt trailers. We table it. I think we can untable this. <coughs> I'll make a motion to untable it. Bring it the table. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Say nay, motion carries to untable it. Um, I think we can go ahead and do this, right? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, it's covered under that. Um, I don't even know what ordinance it was, but I sent you an email. Yeah, it's yeah. covered. 
So the parks it's committee enforced. can go ahead. And it's enforceable. It's enforceable. Yep. So I think it was the parking sign and the four, four bumpers. Did we approve the four bumpers right on the gate too? I think. I can't remember if we did, but we can add that. To Are you case. talking about the parks committee approving it? No, I know they did. Oh, I don't think we have. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm aware of. Because that so was the going coordination. We need a motion to place the signs. Right? Yeah. I'll make a motion that the uh, signs get parking signs get placed at Berry Park per the uh, Parks Committee's direction. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, discussion or decision or recommendations regarding AS Citizens Monitoring Group as requested by General Rock Lake Committee. This was tabled. I don't, I honestly, I have to go through that whole document. I didn't, I didn't get through it all. It's, there's a lot to read and digest there, and I want to stew on that a little bit more. So I don't know if there's Can any done table. It's on table right now. Yeah. I just have a question, if I can ask a question. We're not going to act on it. We're not. So I'm not going to bring it off the table. But I do have a question. I mean, it's it's. I understand that it's a process of identifying an invasive species, and, and you record it and everything like that. But what happens if there is, a, as far as abatement or getting rid of something? There's no mention of that in here. Is that a process? And who's going to pay for that? <clears throat> It is a process and it probably is not included in the document you have. We have reconsidered it after talking to um, the county. Already has a protocol that we shouldn't have rewritten the protocol because as they rewrite the protocol, they're the ones that have the say on how to handle those invasive species. So uh, we will be submitting a different recommendation next time. And yes, it does address how to remove them and if there is a cost, who will pay for it? So it'll, it's be in our next recommendation. It's just we just final. I just finalized the document, but haven't presented it to the our committee yet, and so okay. it will be changed. Gotcha. Sounds good. So we can move on. Yeah. All right. Discussion decision on non-payment by the Jefferson County Drainage Board for reimbursements of work done with Brisky Bridge. I, Brisky Bridge. Ivan. He never got sent Mark, anything. Mark. The attorney has <laughs> yes. not gotten back to us, so we can move yeah. on. He was, he was working on a statement, but it sounded like, I don't know, I won't speak on it, I guess, because I don't have all the information for him. But hopefully we're going to hear that back soon and be able to get really rolling on that in October. It might take care of. Uh, new business. Discussion or decision of John's disposal 2023 rates and extension proposal. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, he says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have seen the meeting I was at last night. No, we, um, it's, a, it's a tough year with CPI. It's a tough year with costs for everything. It's clearly <laughs> you're facing some other battles. I'm hearing if it's any consolation, I hear that the other towns and villages we're in are hearing a lot of the same. It's just, it's just a hard year. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of good news. It, we, even if we set the rates aside for a minute, we're, we're fully staffed. We're still growing. Um, we're not, we haven't sold our company to one of the big guys. Uh, we have no plans to. Um, and we just want to have a continued partnership with the town. So we, we decided this year to reach out kind of a year early and say, hey, if there's any way, maybe we can ease the blow on the budget a little bit by giving you an option to extend if you're happy. Um, that's what we wanted to do. I remember last time I was here, we talked about changing the bulk, and at that time, uh, the board was not in favor of it. For us now, it's a little bit more important to do so. Um, we think that there's a little, we think it's a better program to, to move the bulk collection on call. Um, a lot fewer issues with that. Every, every call is recorded, turns into a work order, which is dispatched. So we have kind of confirmation on all ends of things. You know, and even as I was talking with our customer service supervisor before I came, I said, hey, what's Robin been bugging you about or what are we doing wrong? A lot of it's been bulk yeah. and um, it's just difficult. You get a little bit of a he said, she said, we're going to come back and get it. Um, but I think changing the program would really correct some of those, some of those issues um, without reducing your service. 
Um, and, and one of the things we want to do is not drive down every town road every month with multiple trucks if we don't have to do it. Um, you know, while still giving people the option to use the service up to once a month. So that's what we've proposed for you. Glad to answer any questions. So if we went to an on-call, as the Town of Lake Mills, I'm assuming, would have a certain day of the month that you would be allowed to call because you just don't, you're not going to want to send a truck out to Town of Lake Mills, you know, four days out of a week. No, but we're going to probably make more collections in the town than one day of the month. So right now you're waiting for that third week of the month to put your bulk out, but we get to gain a little bit of efficiency. Okay, so the city has already opted for that. So maybe I got 30 stops I got to get in the city and then there's 30 that are, that are in the town that we can do together. And it's a better day for the driver, a little bit more predictable um, and better for residents. So now when you call, we're just going to say, hey, the next available pickup date is it's this Wednesday oh, okay. or it's next Wednesday or whatever it is. Right. And it gives our scheduler a little bit of flexibility to say, might be a, on Thursday, we could be out here really well. Maybe it's a holiday week or you got high volume, right? Would you be okay with a Saturday pickup? You know, and so you just start to you open up some options. There. Well, and I think the other thing that happens is you can identify what's being picked up. So we don't have the TV sitting alongside the road because Correct. it's not something they pick up. It's all discussed with the customer while they're calling in the pickup. On the phone. And it, and, it, and it, you know, I don't know if you guys have a lot. There's, you know, there's some in the city and then there's, you know, the city of Jefferson's kind of another example, but it lets us clamp down a little bit on some of the abuse of the program. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm remodeling my entire home. I'm going to put it all at the curb. <laughs> Yeah. We might say, okay, you should get a dumpster. And it's not to drive our dumpster sales. You can call any company you want. It's more of what is the intent of the municipal program. Let's narrow that down a little bit or right. specify it. In the and then we don't have the piles of stuff sitting by the roadside for months at a time. Right. Yeah. So if we you do see stuff brought in on that third Tuesday, I don't know if you guys do. I oh, see it. Yeah. yeah. Every community does. Yeah, it's much. Every community does. But when you change the program, you know, the other thing is, and I don't know how much of an issue it is for you specifically, but you change the program. I mean, right now, or it used to be, our website was a roadmap for the scrappers to come in and, and beat us oh, through exactly. and yes. take out yeah, anything value. Yeah, and, and people just, it drives you nuts. You look outside and there's, you know, someone just picking through the stuff that you have at your <laughs> curb. Well, when it's on, a, on call, it by and large eliminates that. So we, we really look at it as an increase in service and a lot of pros. Um, and it, there's a process. It takes time for people to learn the program. We've helped with, you know, Robin and communicating it in the new year. And then typically what we're going to do is we're going to run the existing bulk routes for the first couple of months and just tag. We're going to take the materials, but maybe we'll tag the card or something like that. A way to communicate with the resident, hey, we're taking it this time, but next time you got to call it in. And then eventually there will be a hard cutoff where people will have to call. It's a learning curve. Yep. Yeah. yep. But we did it in the city. We've probably now moved, you know, if we're in 60 communities, it, I think we've moved about 40 of them to this. And uh, I talk to my route managers each year to say, what communities should we kind of focus on? And you guys do come up on that list. And it's not a negative, it's just more of we want to improve that service and it's a good way to do it. Well, what was the reason for not doing this in the past or not doing this in the past time? Um, I think it was still really new at the city last time it came up. We weren't sure. There were yeah, a lot of people complaining yeah. because they were sure. sure. Just doing it. Yeah. They had just accepted it maybe. Or yeah. it was, we tried yeah. to kind of get both at the same time and we got out. a yes and a no. <laughs> and out of the 40 uh, towns and cities that you do, it's working well. It, really well, yeah. You know, the, I think the biggest thing that we're hearing now is, now I don't need to wait. So the other thing we'll kind of say as an advantage, maybe you do have a larger project or something that's going on. Well, okay, I'll try to set one up on the fourth week of this month and then the first week of this month or something like that. Or, you know, there's just ways that it's, it's a little bit more convenient for residents. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it just, we think it cleans up the community a little bit. So it used to be, okay, you're the third week. Well, at what point during the second week do people just start putting it out there and leaving it out there? You know? How many uh, people have you got answering phones to schedule this? I think our call center right now, we had a, we had a number of 
work from home right? uh, during COVID and then just never came back. I mean, <laughs> they stay home and they, it's, it's really, it's quite incredible. Uh, probably 15. Oh. Um, our, it's a, I would encourage you, you know, hopefully, well, hopefully you make the decision tonight. That's good for everyone. But I, even still, I would encourage you, I mean, call our call center sometime and just try to set something up or ask a question. You're not going to be on hold. Our call okay. center is in Whitewater. I mean, we're here, you know, and that's a, that's a big thing that's different than the national companies that are out there. Well, and I've worked with other garbage haulers for other communities that I've worked for and I have to say John's by far is the easiest from a customer service standpoint to work with them and then work with the residents so for what that's worth I think it's easy to put crushing that garbage can I want to get five more years out of it. <laughs> He's got a couple of cracks and I keep putting the It's not hey. Because <laughs> I like that's the old on, one. That's on, that's on us. We do that. <laughs> Those old ones are nice. They only last so long. <laughs> the warranty on them is 10 years. <laughs> I think we'd have to, if we do the extension, there would have to be a revised contract, correct? Yeah, so we would, we'd prepare something. I can get you, us, you know, uh, really the only thing in it, besides from dates and rates that would change is the section on bulk. And generally, when we make the change to call on bulk, we just, we flesh it out a little bit more. It's still multiple items. We're still gonna take leaps and bounds more than our competitors. We just wanna, we wanna dial it in a little bit. So the on-call, that would not be an additional charge to that residence. It's, it's included into the 1245. Correct. Well, then you kind of have an idea how many calls one resident is putting in as well. So you kind of have yeah. an idea. Of right. How and that was going to be my it. next question. Is there a limit? Yeah. <laughs> so, you're, you're, so right now you can put it out once a month. Right. The bulk week. Yeah. With the new program, you can call up to one time a month. Oh, okay. So it's right. the same, same yes, volume, exactly. same limits. Okay. And it, honestly, it's just, it's a little bit more trackable. I think we're going to see some tons come down again, which is good. That's good for your budget, you know, and when we look at our budgets and that. But it's not, when we first started promoting it, we thought maybe this is going to be a big budget saver. We're going to spend less hours. We find that it's, it's roughly about the same, but the tonnage goes down. And I think what that is, is you're eliminating the abuse. Mm -hmm. Robin, do you remember um, what we raised the garbage to last year? Because we inflated it just a little bit to take yeah, it. Yeah, it's up to two twenty-five, and I think the year prior was a two ten. Two fifteen, maybe two fifteen. Yeah, that sounds about right for a year to put your garbage out in it goes away each week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Well, it's kind of interesting. When, I, when I was listening to the EMS conversation, you just start to think, what do other people charge for what they do? And it's kind of like, well, 165 bucks for fire coverage. I'm like, well, man, I've never called the fire department once in my life, but I put out a lot of garbage, you know, for yeah. a comparable amount of money. Yeah. Um, I, I, I personally like the on call. And the other reason I say that is, yeah. It's all trackable. Yes. You, you can't track this stuff we're doing now. There's there's people, there's one place I watch it's got, but I'm not going to sit there and write all those down where they got it out there every time. And I mean, it's, it's a lot. It's going to prevent have a perhaps our police officers from having to deal with. There's people crimes. running businesses and area communities, and I think they bring it in. I mean, oh, yeah, I've seen it. I think there's well, stuff going when, on. When it goes on call, I'm telling you, and we had it in the city. You root that out really, really fast. You know, mm -hmm. so like our tire policy is still two per month, eight per year. That wouldn't change. But when we go on a bulk route now in the township, I mean, our driver can go down and see two tires <laughs> at 15 houses in a row. It's like, yeah. well, we know what happened there. Yep. But when it's on right. call, you eliminate that. Right. You know? Yeah, I, I think you just, it's, I think this day and age, I think that's a smart thing to do. But that's just me. You think, I don't, do we, if we make any changes, do we do that tonight or do we wait until we actually put the budget numbers together and then make the decision? Well, I think we kind of know what it's going to cost now, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to have a motion to write a new contract. Okay. Accept a new contract. Yeah. So, 
we're going with the 2023 with extension, Rick? Correct. Five year contract extension. I make a motion that we accept the cost for garbage and recycling pickup for the 2023 with the five year extension and uh, the on call for bulk pickup. Second. <coughs> Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Yeah. We will get you a contract to review. Thank okay. you for your That's time. Good. Then we can have it ready for the October meeting. Absolutely. Okay. Um, thank you for your service. Yeah, service. You. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Discussion and decision of Joint Rock Lake Committee budget requests. Wendy, is it $1,500 in total? Yes. Oh. Yes. So I didn't And just to say, some of these activities, like fundraising activities, if we don't start a fundraising committee, we probably won't use that money. Um, office supplies, I just grabbed some out of the air, but you know, a lot of people have spent money on office supplies that have never turned in any budget made by a book chart and whatnot, it does cost money. The biggest thing for me is that the attend, attending the convention is pretty important. I was the first time attendee last year and I learned just a whole lot about things that I never knew was out there. Well, I think it's, I, I think this is acceptable. I think we, I think we should pay half in the city. Should, you should, because you have you have given this to the city yet. I haven't given it to the city yet because I wasn't sure of the process because but I, yeah. I am going to send it to the city and I will talk to Greg Waters to see what that process is. Last year we did not really get an approval from them on the budget. So yeah, it's not the one get person. A denial either. Yeah. So well, I don't know if it, I don't money. think it was I don't think it was ever presented to them. It was presented. Well I don't know when but it was I, I don't remember but it wasn't right away, I know that. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think we should, uh, I would pay for half and then go to the city and see if they pay. I mean, if the his city's not gonna participate in this thing, I don't understand why we have a joint committee. I mean, 750 bucks, that's, come on. I just have a question on your uh, office meeting supplies. Uh, I don't, do you use paper? And, I mean, well, what would that include, I guess? Well, I guess some of the, we do print a lot of items that we, you know, agendas and whatnot. So, again, that's probably a little high, but yeah, we do buy flip chart paper when we do brainstorming activities and markers and so. Do you um, turn in those receipts? Or we never have because we've never had a budget for it. Before. Okay, but you will now. But we would now. Okay. Yeah, and that'd be fair to them because they're, they don't, they don't get paid that way. No, right. And then we but we need, a, we need a record. Then in the future, we yeah. have a better idea of are we really spending that much money or aren't we? Maybe Correct. Sure it's a $50 right. budget versus a $200 budget. Yeah, you're not down at the local tavern. You know, I mean. No. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to spend so many permitting. Something to keep in mind that this would be the first time out of a subcommittee at this level that we would be considering office supplies. Just so we know that if we're going to start this for one, if Parks Committee needs something, we have to. Yeah. know that we're starting something on this. Well, I think if that increases, then I think we just kind of streamline it and mm -hmm. just come through the town or whatever mm -hmm. when they need things, I guess. I don't want to make it more, I have a headache for you right now either. No, thanks. So. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I get it. We have like expense sheets that would need to be filled out for who needs the reimbursement, yeah, things like that. that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we can approve this tonight, but, but because of the fundraising thing and whatever, and you have to talk to the city, but. Well, that wouldn't happen anyway if we don't, they wouldn't, be able, they wouldn't be able to use that money if we don't approve that anyway. Right. So. Right, so. Yeah, that's why I put that in there. When approved by the town board. Mm -hmm. It's just that if approved by the town board. So I don't know what you. Well, I think we still need to even work on our budget itself to see if we even can 
do this and then wouldn't this be approved then at the level of the budget when we approve the budget? Yeah. Yeah, because we have to we have to take a look at the big picture and right. include this into it. Yeah. yeah. So we hold this to a budget time. Yep. But glad you got it in and turned it into If you hear anything from the city in the meantime, if they're gonna do half and half, yeah, let us know. Please let us know. Yeah. Hang on to that for budget meetings first. Okay. So I'm not making more copies. All right, moving on. Discussion or decision of joint Rockway committee ordinance draft. I need more time to digest that. That's all I'm going to say. Wendy, do you have a draft of that that shows the differences between yeah. what's currently there and what's been changed? I do. I thought I sent that to you. Had red markings on it. I, I think it, it, it came in the, the final format, so it prints. As the final form. Yeah, that so would we'll do a PDF right. yeah, of the. I can print the others. It's, again, it's just like wording changes that make more sense than the words if over there. It's no content, but I do. Yeah, if you one. save it as a PDF at that. Maybe that went away. Level. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send it with okay. the red markings in it. Uh, the other question I had, uh, just quick, I guess, is um, you have an attorney on the committee. Did he? Do you, do you think this is something that would have to be sent to legal when yes. it's done? We're just going to send it anyway with the rest. That and do we, we wouldn't have to send this to the DNR or anything because there's no regulations on it, right? I don't know how this was passed uh, originally. Do you remember, Jane? I don't, I don't either. I don't remember here, so. I think it does. The lawyer on our committee is the one that made all the changes. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the lawyer on our committee is the one that recommended all the changes. Yeah, well, that's I think, what I figured. I think it does go to the DNR because it. It's coordinated between Town Lake Mill City and the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Okay. Yeah. I think that's if it goes to the DNR, it's probably going through their legal. Right. Yeah, I'm sure it will. <clears throat> that's why I asked. As I to whether or not we can get this looking at right. this already, so <laughs> actually it was probably originally written by the state. Um, there was a that um, Attorney that uh, Ray Crack? Hope worked with. Was it Ray Crack? No. no. He was an older gentleman. Anyway, okay. okay. He was an expert on lakes and things like that. So I think that's okay. Excellent. You're making progress, though. That's good to hear. It's getting a lot done. It's, this is a great time to do it because we're going through all over a lot of ordinances right now. All right. Discussion or decision to clean out uh, for culvert on Cedar Lane. Well, we just saw another figure on that one. I just, I guess, the only thing I need to, we just got to figure out what's going on with this whole thing. Just, I don't know how far the town right away is there. Is it near more of the curtain? Like, how, like is? No, I don't think so. I, I don't think there's out there 40 feet. Yeah, I was just going to say, the so I don't. The curtain is out 40 feet, feet. the right away is what, 25 or 30? So we got to figure it from yeah. the center of Cedar Lane. Right. So it's, 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 it's uh, 40 from the road, at least. So there's a, there's a discrepancy there, and then who's, like, I, I don't know, even know who owns this thing. The Trividity curtain? No, the whole channel. Oh, yeah, I don't know. we got to figure that out I first know. before we can do anything or make a decision on it. Uh, yes. I'll, I'll have our committee try and write up some sort of a history of what well, permits were. We'd like to see probably, like, actual documents showing right. what... Sounds great. Yeah, that one we have that back up. Yeah, and you can also follow up with the state too. Um, I, I had one contact. I mean, that may not even be the right one, and if it isn't the right one, hopefully, you re, if it re, if he re, redirects me, he was on vacation. I will get you that contact. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, some they got to have record of this thing. Somebody's right. got to have record. That well, way we have something tangible. Yeah. yeah. If you dug that thing today, you would have to go through. The Corps of Engineers, DNR, oh, yeah. the EPA. Yeah. So somebody's so got records on this. I, I don't know what they had in 57. I know there was no zoning, but there sure is had yeah. to be something that some so approval. Somebody approved it, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. There's, there's information. I mean, we just got to dig it out. I wish it wouldn't have had to have been dug out. It could have been the last <laughs> minute. But I'm not even going to go there. It seems like everything's got to be hidden. Yes, sir. <sighs> No action. No, no action. Okay. 
Uh, discussion or decision to allow Daybreak to pay for installation of two pedestrian signs and crosswalk on Crossman Road. Is this going to be uh, like electric crosswalk when you hit the button? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't talk to Keith about that one, but uh, I think it was going to be painting lines and putting to have the signs. county make the signs and install them, and they're just going to pay for the whole thing. But what is that, you know, is that going to set precedent throughout? every other township that's out there. Now what happens if somebody's walking halfway across that crosswalk and a car comes? So are they obligated to stop? Who's gonna enforce that? And to me, it could be a nightmare. There's different types of crosswalks, is my understanding. Like out at the museum in Ashland, we have one that's not, if I get this right, there's one that's not slanted and there's one that is slanted. For crosswalks, I think there's a difference between the two. Maybe that's changed. Maybe that's well, just by, by state law, not pedestrian in crosswalk is you hit a pedestrian, you're going yeah. to jail. It's your job to watch out for pedestrians. So yeah. if one goes in, yeah. would Brian, you yeah, would, just, would Brian be a good one to ask what could be put out there that's legally enforceable versus what's not legal? Brian Udovich. Oh, I can ask, I can run that by it, but I, I think once you do it, once you take action at the board level here, it's just going to follow state law. It's a pedestrian crosswalk, so it's going to be enforceable. I understand why they want to do it, especially, you know, when you have this high volume of a bird flu and to keep those personal I mean, it's vehicles. crossed our road, it's not their road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, away from their facility, but I just think it's a whole big can of worms. Do they really have that many people walking back and forth? There's a big parking buildings? lot, I think, across the street as well. Yeah, they do, you know, during shift change and stuff like that. I don't know how many employees, but sometimes, you know, I've never counted the cars, but 25, 30 cars sometimes. So you know, and during the avian flu, they make them park right. on the feet yeah. side and walk across, right. except for the handicap. Um, so they do have additional risk, but were they able to give you any examples of other things, whether it's another chicken farm or other places within the county or in the area that would have no, something like this? No, he did not. But I mean, it's a big, it's, it's a big operation. It's the only one that we have taxes. in the town that's both sides of the road a business. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Right. I, I would say. I would say yeah. So I don't know. That it's what, a major what, business now. I don't know what precedent you'd be setting. It's a business versus a residential area. I mean, right. you could use that argument. Well, if the farm's got business on both sides of the road and they yeah. want a pedestrian okay. walk right All right. Out, you're, just... you're right. <laughs> Good point. That's what I was kind of hoping Ryan was going to stick around just so we could hear what he, what his opinion was. But I don't know. Well, we don't have to I, act, I, I see we, that we don't have to act on it tonight, but I, it, it's, I mean, to me, it, it's a big operation. They got quite a few people. They're moving around. It's, I don't see a lot of that. I mean, there, I know there's farms and stuff in the township, but we're talking about a handful of people. They're going to pay for their installation, though? They're paying for the whole thing. No, I know Daybreak is right. farm, yeah. your regular right. farm. They're not going to pay to strike that every, every year. Well, that, you know, what do we have to do on any of our ordinances possibly to make it so it is enforceable at a town level? Because it is a town road, not a state or county or... Right. And do we just cite a state statute that covers it or... So the legality of enforcement, I think, if there was an issue of somebody getting hurt or hitting a pedestrian walkway, we need to know if that's covered. Well, I mean, when you put, up, is, I mean, when we put up a stop sign, it's enforceable. Oh, right, yeah. So, I mean, a pedestrian sign is the same thing. I don't know, is a pedestrian crosswalk, <laughs> is that even <laughs> allowable on a 45 mile an hour speed limit road? I don't know. We can find that out. It's all questions we're going to find out. I understand the intent. The that signs you can put why. up. Signs you can put up. Right. The crosswalk, I don't know, you know, without reducing the speed limit. <clears throat> yeah. Which we cannot reduce that speed limit anymore because we already did the 10 miles an hour and that's all you can do without a speed study. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. tracking study. If right. they like it lower than that, they can help pay for a speed study to yeah. lower through that area. <laughs> if they feel it's a danger, if it's a right. safety yeah. issue. 
time. Because then I don't know really how well it's lit. Do they have employees that are going back and forth in the dark? Obviously, as the shorter days, there is the yeah. more chances in the dark. So that's four thirty in the evening that we go across. Yeah, it's getting dark. Are you, work, there? you talking to Keith? Yeah, I mean, okay. I can I can okay. research it more. I don't okay. know. I, I just laid out my personal opinion. I mean, they gave us a lot of money for a road, and I mean, there's a lot of farmers that wreck our roads and don't give us a penny. So yeah. <laughs> I'd like to stay on the good side of it if it's if it's all legal to do, which I know the pedestrian signs probably are. I don't know about the crosswalk. I think to me, it's pretty trivial. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I don't see anybody else asking. Have one for you. They didn't have to pay for it if they do. Yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, that's the thing. So, I don't know. I make a motion that we allow them to do this on their dime. So, again, providing it's legal. Yeah. Yeah. Can you amend that to say that? Yeah. Okay. And then, is there one or two? There's two driveways. <laughs> it's just the one I think he was talking about. Parking lot is. Well, it says two. Oh, two signs. Okay. Two signs. No, because you got to have one. Yep. Side yep. Two signs. But are you going to put in a stipulation of one? One or crosswalk. Two? No, it's one crosswalk. Okay. That's the motion. One crosswalk. Okay, so one crosswalk that you pay for it, and as long as it's legal, it's part of the motion. Is that yep. correct? Correct. Okay. Second yeah, motion. I did. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, okay. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 I'll pull the same name. Motion carries. Uh, discussion or decision on including town on any emails in regards to odor at Daybreak Foods. I put this on here because we, I think the email came to you first, didn't it? To, Which one? From Anita <laughs> about putting something up on the website. Yeah. And to, to contact basically the, the state and yeah, the state DNR rep that deals with the odors and documenting it and researching it. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know, I was a little, I guess, I understand that, but I was a little bit perturbed because that business resides in our township. And when they couldn't answer the question when they were here as to how many, roughly how many complaints they were getting. It was a lot. And after I talked to Daybreak, they know who all the complaints are coming from. And, you know, was there more than a handful of people? So I, I'm just, I, you know, we need to be copied on anything. I don't really need that many emails in my email box, though. That's the thing. Yeah. I'd rather see it come to us in a report form, if possible. Well, we, we could, we could do that emails. as well. But we I mean, we we need to be informed right. because we can't have this non-transparency. I think I don't like that. That's ridiculous, as far as I'm concerned. Well, and I think Anita's point on providing that information as she did was if they have a complaint, they do it to this entity at the DNR level because they document it. So it's not documented at our level, it's documented at the state level where they have more enforcement power. Right, but I mean, we want to, we need to get copies of that some way, somehow. So I mean, I'm, I guess until we have a concrete, I mean, if somebody, some, this, you know, I mean, we see the emails and the only one <laughs> at the township level, you know, Sometimes Almost weekly. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, they come in. Oh, yeah. yeah That's I what mean, I'm saying. Is it is it best practice to have all those coming to my inbox, or is it best practice to have that going to a place where it's being documented on a regular basis or consistently? Well, I mean, are you adverse to putting it up on the website, I guess? It's, to them. If it helps them to document it properly, I don't think that's a problem. It's information we provide okay. to them, but... Then I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Also adding in that we get the documentation of these complaints because I, the, it is a business in our town. It's an agricultural farm, so to speak, uh, even though it's more commercialized. Um, but the deck is stacked against farmers, and they're providing eggs, you know, doing their best job to keep prices down for low-income folks, and you know. It is what it is. I mean, when you live around the farm, it stinks. Um, granted, I don't like the smell a lot of times either, but um, agriculture has gone that direction, and they're monitored. 
So it's not like they're going unmonitored. Uh, they're making improvements. I talk to Keith monthly, and they are striving towards making great improvements. And over the last course of the last year and a half, I think they've gone a long way. I think that it stinks a lot less. I mean, and they've really stepped up their wastewater holly to try to control that. And I believe, I mean, if you check with Keith, I think if you want to a log they log all of their complaints too so. yeah. yeah yeah but i mean i don't want to i don't want to have to go after this stuff i want mm. you know delivered you know when chase for it right i mean it's so once a month they send us the log yeah, yeah. give the practice we should we should have a record of it too i mean it resides resides in our township not to have a record of that i think is just a mistake i mean it's just we should just make a motion that we get get a copy of that request yep it is a private Entity is that like an open records request to a? They you shouldn't don't, have to use an open yeah. public Hopefully request for that. Hopefully, they do it as a courtesy to keep things going. So. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, basically, the email can go to the contact at the DNR, and if we don't receive them, then we pull it off the website. You know, because that should be their job to make sure that we're informed. And if you've gotten those emails from a couple of those complaintees, all those websites are listed. I mean, they, when I get them, they are. I'm assuming all the different entities that they're sending it to, yeah. yeah. Well, I see the one. There's a list. The one in that is yeah. copy CC down there, but yeah. it's the only one we see. It's not the many that were oh, right, yeah, exactly. last board meeting, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> confused. Well, there's inconsistency in where people are submitting their complaints to. That's why I'm saying if we all say, no, your complaints need to go to this one spot, which is the DNR individual, then there's some consistency. Yeah, so. right. Well, can we get a motion to put that up on the website as long as we get the oh. monthly log of the complaints? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Discussion or decision on appointments to vacant uh, committee positions, joint Rock Lake Committee and Public Works Board. I don't have anybody for JRLC yet. Summertime, anybody step to the plate. Public Works Board, I haven't had anybody step to the plate on that either. Um, I'm more than happy to temporarily step in and serve on that, but we also didn't get written confirmation that he resigned, so I don't know. I did attend most of tonight's meeting. Is public works meeting usually tonight, same as our board meeting? Uh, it can be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right before, so I mean, if it is, I have to leave early. It's just the way it is. Depending on how lengthy they get. So you want to be on a temp, uh, in the interim? Temporarily until we hear from John or hear or uh, get an appointee. Or make both. a motion to come. Is our representative until find a replacement? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Discussion or decision of Clean Boats, Clean Waters 2023 application. Discussion or decision of wages for Clean Boats, Clean Waters inspectors. First of all, uh, we should be asking for 5,335 hours, right? Increase it to 4,000 in the grant request amount. And the town share would be 1335. Um, I do have a question on that though. How many hours? I mean, the money goes to pay their wages, correct? And that's it? Or wages. because this doesn't add up to 200 hours? No. Yep. You did. No. So what's it? Oh, I mean, do we get the full amount? Some of it, um, I should have got last year's. Um, obviously, some of my wages are covered in that as well. Okay. Because I do put some hours in managing a part of it. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, costs and like some of the T-shirts we get them, so they have that consistent, okay, uniform, so to speak. So um, it's whatever. It's up to you spend up to right. So if you only spend five thousand, the DNR pays their portion, and we pay our portion. Right. And, okay. Now in okay. the past. We've been submitting both that one as well as one identical to that for the city of Lake Mouse as well. Yeah, but they, they have they, they do their launches. They spend 200 hours at the city's launches and 200 hours at the town's. 
No, that's that's what Marissa's <laughs> that was her email said that they had reached the two hundred on the Town Lake Mills, but they still have thirty or something to do on the city of the two hundred. Right. I think so a lot of that we get up to the town we get enough at the town because I know Dennis spends a lot of time at the north end. And Dennis right. puts the most hours in. Dennis puts Dennis yeah. saves the program. I'm just yeah, gonna I know. I'm just going to say that right doing. now, because I know he this, especially this year, because it didn't look like there was a lot of hours. The others did not put a lot of hours in, though. Well, so maybe if we raise raise the wages, somebody else will step up. Mm -hmm. too. Well, that's going to be that's a question kind of statewide right now, right? Because comparable wages are, you know, why do this when? You know, okay, it's, get, it's getting harder. It was hard to find them this year. We got kind of lucky in the end there, to be honest. Yeah. How, the only thing I'm going to say is I, I know we've kind of did this whole thing even for the city over the years, and I don't know, was there an agreement or something that was signed? Not with us. Because Greg Water said there was an agreement, so that must have been a verbal agreement, I'm guessing. If the, it, this program started when I was not on the board. Um, is it possible there's an agreement in the file someplace? Maybe. <laughs> well, this <laughs> is, this is, this is always it. organized by uh, was the county. Um, Marissa and Patricia, mm -hmm. they always have organized this and, and they train and they, they hire the people too, don't they? Or do we hire them? No, uh, I sat in on it this year. Okay, yeah. but, okay. but they're involved. In it. They're, they're involved with it, but I think that was kind of just passed off to them. We're the ones that actually Managed. essentially manage Well, them. we do the, pay the payroll side of it. Payroll side of it, so. Um, they take care of the, it, like you said, the initial training and data, sure, things like that. Right. They get the data entry training taken care of, so they get the information that these people are collecting into their system so they can use the data. But my, my point, so why are we worried about the city? Well, like, because don't we bill them for something? You know, we have to bill them back for their grant amount so that it covers comes back <laughs> to us because we're administrating both the towns and the cities. So so my my deal is we have our landings, they have their landings. We don't get boat launch fees for their landings. No. Right. Why aren't they doing the program and we're doing the program? Exactly. Just for our launchers, launchers. Right. That's what I'm saying. Why don't we just do ours? And I think we should. We they they got a good council in place now. They, they should, got staff. They got okay. staff. Yeah. They, this should be a slam dunk for them to, to, to have some accountability on this lake, you know, to do it and take care of their own landings, as far as I'm concerned. I agree. We should apply for the 5333, 53, I'm sorry, that's 5333, grant request 4,000. And then the difference is 1333. Do we need Elm Point on here too, Robin? They haven't done Elm Point in the past, but it's possible. I, mean, I could ask Marissa if that's something that can be added. I think we should add it just to have it on there. I mean, they probably won't spend a lot of time down there because there's only a couple of yeah. spots, but it's three launches. I mean, be... So I'll make a motion that we uh, apply for the Clean Waters, Clean Boats project funding request those numbers I just stated. Second. For the three landings, right? Okay, and add the, add the Elm Point landing. Three landings. Okay. Okay. That's amended. Did you second me? Yes, I did. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion. Now you want to discuss wages. Yes. So it said the average is 15. The state. Well, I don't know what the state average is, but that's what it seems like all the minimum wages went to. She said 15. She says Lake Ripley pays 15. She doesn't say anything. Um, I know an LCC I serve on. Green, Green Lake and Lake Geneva, Geneva are up to 17. 17. And okay. she said it would be a good idea to pay 15. I make a motion that we pay him fifteen dollars an hour. Second. Any other discussion? I don't know the northern part of the state. They don't pay that, but well, I, I would suspect these rates are going to go up because yeah. it's really hard to find people. Mm -hmm. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Discussion or decision of attorney recommendation to review the town's uh, regulations on sex offender residency restrictions due to recent seventh. 
the Circuit Court of Appeals decision. We don't have an ordinance now on that. I don't think we need one. <clears throat> the state controls, puts those people wherever they put them anyway. Yep. Yeah. And no control over it. <laughs> the the first time they it. put one in our township, they held a public meeting, which they're not even required to do that. And then they end up with two and then three. So and we have them right in our neighborhood and we were never even notified. But I guess you can ask the attorney that. Tell him we don't have one. Um, we don't feel we need one. That's his okay. opinion on whether or not we should have one, basically. Yeah. So I make a motion that we contact the attorney and get his opinion whether we should have one or not. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Discussing our decision of fall road tour date. Sooner the better for me. <laughs> <laughs> Seen them beans lately? They get pretty dry. They're turning yellow. <laughs> Last year we didn't do it until November. Yeah. I think, do you need to see whether the leaves on the trees yet, as far as any trees that need to be? trim back before winter or um, dead trees dead trees well, there's a lot of dead trees yeah yeah i don't know if you want to see those i don't think you can deal with those until they actually <laughs> <laughs> Don't they, wouldn't they call you on the 16th to let you know whether or not you need to be in there on the 19th? You have a real surprise. Okay. I was not to have to call until Friday, but I had to report oh. today. What about okay. the 29th, 30th? Or somewhere in that day, really? How long are you on jury duty? That's good with me. What's that? 28th, 29th, 30th. I'm on yeah. You know, I can... 28th, 29th. I can make it work if we do it early in the morning. I don't It doesn't matter. Because it really wouldn't take us that long just to drive around, right? Very early morning is fine by me. Which day are you looking at now? 29th? 28th, 29th, or 30th. Dave? Yeah, any one of those days would be fine. All right, let's do the 28th. 28th? At, uh, when's it get light? 630. 630. 630. Yep, I'm all in. 630 a.m.? Sure. Yeah. Not even. <laughs> <laughs> the birds are up there. <laughs> Did you want to ride along? <laughs> Blow the horn when you pass my place. Yeah. Watch out for that you split traffic. Woke up? We'll, <laughs> we'll head there first. I'll make, a, I'll make a motion to put it on the, uh, what is that, September uh, 28th at 6.30 a.m. All in favor say aye. 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 I'll pull the city motion carries. Okay. Correspondence. I had Linda Brewer. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a question about drainage issues. With yeah, the we could look at that on the road tour. Too. Yeah, I, I think we should. Um, I was out there. She also called me a couple of different times. So um, I can see where they have some trouble. We could take a look at it and only take a minute. And we yeah. also should then, uh, I'll talk to Jeff LeVake to see what the plan is on the Schwartz's driveway. If it's going to increase that size, if they're not, we need to take a look at that too because yeah. it's undersized. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and there's other things we'll have to look at on the road. Yeah. I the Shore Acres Road probably won't be done by then, but that's all right. It'll be, we're in good hands with the county on that. 
Meeting scheduled. Do you have any thing around the correspondence? Um, the only thing I was going to suggest that maybe on our agenda is to, at the end is to just list upcoming agenda items so we just have a, a starting point with our lists. So oh, okay. Yeah, we can do that. Good suggestion. Uh, let's start that next month because yep. um, yeah. I didn't take notes this one. No, yep. I kind of do, but I think if we're all on the same page, okay. it's going to be more efficient. So. Yep, okay. Meeting scheduled September 15th, 2022, Town Hall Facilities Committee meeting, 6 p.m. Town Hall, October 4th, 2022, Planning Commission meeting, 7 p.m. at the Town Hall. <coughs> October 6th, 2022, Parks Committee meeting, 7 p.m. at the Town Hall. October 11th, Town Board meeting, 7 p.m. at the Town Hall. October 13th, 2020, uh, oh yeah. October 13th, Joint Rock Lake Committee meeting, 6 p.m. at City Hall. And October 13th, 2022, Town Budget Workshop at Town Hall. We're going to keep that the same, or are we going to move that? You had said something about you may need it moved. I'll be out of town, but I can attend Zoom. And I just, if I have a, like a typed or a emailed copy, I don't need to see it on screen. We can do that and... Um, it's not a problem. We could get you a printed copy before you go when yeah. you leave. Yeah. Because then probably they can the share 12th, a screen. The 12th. Okay. Yeah. Because we can share. I mean, the otherwise, the set seventeenth the night before I leave is good too. Seventeenth. That's a Monday night. Of October. I think that was one of the other I days. I prefer we not that. I got oh. things going. Yeah. On. Okay. No, that's. I mean, that's fine. I'm more than happy to keep everything the same. And go that direction. So. At six thirty p.m. Six thirty p.m. Yeah. Now we still have six thirty a.m. Because I'm not awake yet. <laughs> 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 All right, can we get an entertaining motion to adjourn? I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 I'll post the meeting. Meeting adjourned.